And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Everybody hates Hulk Hogan. Everybody hates Hulk Hogan. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's time, Bunny! It is time. Yeah. Uh, yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to hey, Macarena, our way into the third and final segment of this week's Big Shoe. And it is said third segment wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, high fiber, and now available without a prescription movie of the week. And this week we continue our summer montage hmm, hmm, with the Rocky franchise, all nine movies, and also uh, Boxing Helena because it's also boxing. This week, we're diving deep into where it goes from Academy Award-winning prestige film to blockbuster summer crap. Yeah. I think it reaches that pinnacle at Rocky IV, which we're getting to next week. Well, but yeah, this no, is where I, it I, I have. I hear what you're saying, and I definitely have some things to say about that. Is it too yeah. early to jump into that? I, yes, okay, because first, I haven't even gotten to the title yet, and then afterwards I want you to give me the screen because I got something special. Okay. What, say okay. that again? Uh, uh, hold on. We got to get to the title. Yes, this week we are continuing our summer of Yo, where we are count, trying to count all of the Yo's in the entire Rocky franchise, and this week we are discussing Rocky Three. Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. Okay, now uh, if you can, Bunny, give me the give me a big screen because I got something special set up. So I got the big screen. Okay, uh, because this is Rocky Three, and this is where it starts getting uh, cheesy and dumb and stupid. So uh, I thought that we would do something special. And so, uh, honey, can you come in and help me with this? Okay. Uh, hold on a second, honey. Okay. There you go. Uh, all right, honey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give, give me the music. Give me the starting no, come on, you gotta keep going. Oh. It's, it's a montage. Oh, it's a montage. It's a montage. Oh, now I'm running faster. Okay, that's good. I was trying to do the face, like that face. Huh? Uh, I was trying to do that face where he's running really hard, like, yeah. you know, like one of those uh, grunting faces. I do. I, I didn't want to set it up. I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> I thought it'd be funnier if it looked crappier. Okay, you don't have to put me in the big screen anymore. Yeah, because I, 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 I didn't set myself up with audio over there. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So, so uh, that was fun. you. That was that I was thought, fun, but if you're gonna do a I montage, that the, man, that background's got to change, you know. Yeah, I thought it. Yeah, I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute. That was fun. Okay, so typical <laughs> typical summer intro. Every summer we so do could themed have gone, summers. This you is could our, have gone from there, from the running on the beach, 
you know, to like running past the Eiffel Tower. I could have. I could have made a montage. I'll try and you and know then, what? And then, I'll just try and do a montage every week, and I'll add things every week. Then you can run then past we'll your like noble. The yeah, that's a good idea. So I'm going to work on a montage that we can do in for every Rocky movie. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, typical summer intro. Every summer we choose a theme. We do themed summers, and. Um, we've done the summer of Star Wars, the summer of Saw, the summer of Fred Willard, which was wonderful. The summer of bottoming, where we focused on movies on IMDb's list of the bottom yes. 100. Last year, we did the summer of COVID exploitation, which was horrible. But what was the name of the one movie that we absolutely love? Where Ram Ranch is the, 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 the national anthem? I think it was just called Coronavirus Conspiracy. Is that... It, it was about... Wait, wait, wait. Aliens wait. and Harambe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cor uh, I think it was just Corona Conspiracy or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that movie was great. Uh, that was, a, that was a find. You and know, then there I was mean, that one movie that was just in an elevator? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, Okay. So, I found uh, that one mildly interesting, but meh. Yeah, yeah, a lot of meh. But before we get to Rocky, at his rockiest, I wanted to talk a little bit about the summer rejects. Yeah. Because there are some things that we haven't done. For example, one of the ideas that I had was the summer of live, where we do nothing but Saturday Night Live movies. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done That's that. That's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea, and it'd be nice to do like the Blues Brothers and look at the Wayne's Worlds and all that. But as a trans woman, I cannot watch It's Pat the movie. Yeah. I can't do it. Period. I had an idea for the summer of sharks because sharks have become so cheap. What was the name of that movie? Uh, shark virus, virus shark, virus shark. That was the name of the movie. We did it last year during the, the yes. summer of COVID exploitation. There are so many shitty shark movies out there. Sharkula, shark bait, shark side of the moon, five headed shark attack, sand shark. Uh, don't mess with the sharkies. There's a movie called Bad CGI Sharks. Yeah. Noah's shark. I, I I don't find sharks scary, you know. Yeah. yeah. And even Jaws, you know, had some fright jump scares. Well, you know, shark victims are kind of scary, but Ooh, like uh, not so much a corn. shark, huh? Sharks of the corn. Sharks of it's the about corn. It's about sharks that live in a cornfield. Okay. Sharks of the corn. So uh, we haven't done that. Oh, and Sharks in Venice. I forgot that. That stars Stephen Baldwin. Yeah. <laughs> and then another one I thought, I thought that you would like this one, this idea, but I think it would be too painful. Uh, the Summer of Amity. Of Amity. The Summer of Amity. Yes, because let me just read some of these to you. Amneville and Origin, Amneville Vibrator, Amneville the Evil Escapes, Amneville Gas Chamber, Amneville um, Uprising, Amneville Clown House, Amneville Scarecrow, Amneville Thanksgiving, Amneville in Space, Amneville Witches, Amneville in the Hood. <laughs> The Amityville Playhouse, the Amityville Horror, the Amityville Moon, the Amityville Cult, Amityville Cop, Amityville Vampire, Amityville Poltergeist, Witches of Amityville, not to be confused with Amityville Witches, the Amityville Harvest, Amityville Mount Misery Road, Amityville Dollhouse, Amityville Island, and we haven't even gotten to any of the main Amity Amityville movies. Yeah. There's a lot. I don't know, man. That that's like 
they would all be cheap it, as hell. Uh, and I, I don't, don't know, know if I any of like them it's would just be good. Too, it's just too close to home. Like, I lived the Amity thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not directly, but just like culturally. I mean, Amityville wasn't far, you know? Yeah. So it was almost eh, kind of the neighborhood. Basically, the neighborhood I'm just looking over. for any summer uh, uh, themes where we don't have to do all the Fast and the Furious movies because yeah. fuck those movies. But I would put I, that I, I would put that in the same category as the Conjuring movies, you know. Conjuring, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I I've had enough of the I had enough of the Warners before they got fucking popular. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, this summer is the summer of yo where we are not only watching all of the Rocky movies and boxing Helena because yeah. boxing, but we are also uh Yes, the Fast and the Furious movies are super freaking dumb. Uh, celebratory build. But I don't like them because I just think that they're dumb and stupid. And also, this isn't a far-right QAnon conspiracy theory bit of nonsense, but Paul Walker did like underage girls. It's a fact that no one likes to talk about because people like the movies where the cars go vroom. Group and so yeah. they, that's why I try not to watch the Fast and the Furious movies. Um, uh, in the beginning of 2022, I was forced to watch like four of them and just uh, they were always playing on TNT on the TNT network, they were always playing. Yeah. Uh, so we are not only watching all the Rocky movies, do we're you, trying to do count you all the yo's. In the Rocky movies, which is do you believe in the in the Vin Diesel the Rock feud? Uh, Yes, because I think the more the Rock becomes famous, the more he becomes a diva. Yeah, he was always like a normal guy playing the Rock in WWE, but now that he's become like a famous worldwide celebrity, I feel that he's. Becoming the actual rock. Yeah. And now he's like, I'm going to make this movie. I'm going to be the star. People can only hit me this many times in the film. I will never lose a fight. Uh, brown M&M's in the dressing room. You know? Yeah. Uh, I like Vin Diesel. He's also hard to work with. But I, I mean, like Vin Diesel because... Yeah, but in this case, it kind of feels like a When he was growing like up, he was just a fat, nerdy kid. And I respect that. Yeah. I absolutely respect that. Yeah, he, he he was like a role playing geek who just buffed up and became an actor. Have you ever seen that video of him selling street sharks, Bunny? I don't think so. It was like at a some video, it, some toy trade show. Vin Diesel before he became famous, and uh, he was it, or maybe it was like a commercial, but he was selling street sharks action figures, and it's just Vin Diesel, and he's all buff. And he's explaining the street sharks and how they're strong sharks that are badass and totally not a rip off of Ninja Turtles. Dogs, can you not? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, uh, we're trying to count the yos. Rocky 1 had a staggering 19 yos. Yes. Rocky 2 had 13. And if you put those together, let me see, 58, 24, 97, carry the 6, uh, 32 yos. We are at right now, before we get to Rocky 3. Bunny! Yes. Two things. Number one, what are your thoughts on this movie? What are my thoughts on like, the movie? Like, really? Give it to me. Okay. Give it to me. Give it to me Two straight. Two things... Up. First, I I just love this movie. Okay? Love I love this movie. But two, it's a fucking cartoon. It is. It is. It's a cartoon. I was telling And this is where the Rocky formula solidifies. Yeah. And you'll see this because same the, the thing. First- 
And you can the first and even Rocky if you've movie, never seen the first it, you can Rocky make predictions movie about is the an next Academy movie. Award winner. Yeah. And then you see this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So so like the first Rocky film was an Academy Award winner, best picture. And yeah. it, it it was an art film. And then the second film was still trying to be that art film. But from Rocky three on, it's just popcorn movies. Yeah. And, and he is... becomes basically a superhero. He becomes Popeye. Yeah. It's like they grabbed the specific notes from yeah. the other movies, you know, and wrote a script around that. Like, so yeah. like Rocky has to have some kind of hard time either financially or morally. Okay. Uh, a, a big challenge comes his way and he's got to decide if he's going to take that challenge or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, somebody's going to die. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is going to die close to him at the hands of the challenger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's going to have a period of doubt. He is going to have a discussion slash argument with Adrian. And then he's going to get serious about his training. Yeah. And then there'll be the fight. He'll win. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's basically it. Like a Godzilla movie. Now we just These, have to... This has become a Godzilla series. Yeah. And now everything around that is kind of plug and play. Yeah. You know? So who the bad guy is? Well, we could swap him and out pretty easy. Who's left to die? Well, we have a few options here. Of me. I can't... I, I am pissed off that Polly lives to long enough to be in Rocky Six. That pisses yeah. me off. Yeah. Because Paulie is a piece of crap. And in this film, he's racist as fuck. Yeah. Where it's like, I hated him in Rocky, I hated him in Rocky too, but in this one, he's racist, and it's like, oh, now I've got an even better reason to hate Paulie because he's a racist bastard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you also gotta figure, you know, in... in in why who dies here, I've got to say is that Burgess Meredith was like, you know what? I'm reading this shit, this script. It's time hmm. to jump this ship. <laughs> I, I I respected the fact that uh, Mickey dies and he has a uh, a Jewish funeral. Yeah. Because there's a few shaloms that get dropped during that funeral, and it's like, yeah. oh, good for you, Rocky. You're finally getting culture. Yeah. You know? Getting out of uh, Little Italy or whatever. Uh, second thing, Bunny, that I wanted to ask you, uh, scheduling question. Right now, we're doing every other week. We're recording the podcast every other week, yeah. and it really helps me out uh, for stress reasons. But uh, two weeks from now, you probably don't know this because I'm not talking about it a lot. Two weeks from now, I will be on the main stage at Oklahoma City Pride Fest performing in front of like yeah. hundreds of people. Yeah. I, I don't really talk about it a lot. <laughs> but. Well, maybe we take a we take a bit of a breather. Or. We do it next week. Hmm. What is hmm. your? I think preference? I can do it. I think I can do it. Okay. It's Rocky Four, and I already have a shaft lined up because, um, the freaking statue. Okay. Of Rocky from Rocky Three, apparently that's a whole shaft in and of itself, and I, I, so I've already got that written in my head. Cool. I thought that it was just a legitimate statue that was there, but no, there's been this whole back and forth about the statue, and I find it fascinating and kind of funny. Okay. If you want to do it this Sunday, this next yeah. Sunday. Yeah. 
next know. Sunday, and then after that, we'll do every other week. But if you wanna, if you wanna take a breather before your big show, that'd be cool too. No, I we're gonna do Rocky Four next week, and then after that, I'll be ready to Rocky montage my way into my big performance. Well, okay. yeah. These fucking puppies haven't been adopted. Oh wait, they'll be a, so. On Sunday? Okay. Cool. So, Rocky Three came out in 1982, and despite some reviews calling it unnecessary, it was as at its time of release the highest grossing Rocky film in the franchise. Fun fact, Rocky, Rocky's son in this, this film, not in the other film, but in this film, came out as trans in 2003. So, yay, sister. Okay, who is that? She, uh, the little kid who plays Rocky's son uh, in Rocky Three, is now a celebrated female journalist for Axios. So, yay, sister. Good for you. Okay. Also, nice. uh, uh, in case you haven't figured it out by now, I'm trans and it's Pride Month. And so I'm being loud and proud. If you don't like it, you can F off. Rocky Three is where these movies, uh, like we were saying earlier, de evolve from Academy Award winning art films to popcorn munching blockbusters. Yeah. yeah. And now, finally, it's Eye of the Tiger Tongue. Yeah. I think they mentioned that a few times in the movie. Yes, they did. <laughs> That was a hell of a, a fucking times. promotion campaign. A couple of times. And it seems like whenever I hear this song mentioned, it's mentioned more as a joke. Yeah. It spent six weeks at number one in the uh, in the Billboard Top 100 hits, the song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. It yeah. was nominated for Best Original Song, but it lost to Love Lift Us Up Where We Belong. <laughs> Which I think is a mistake, but what else? Uh, they, they, but uh, Survivor would have yet another big hit with the next film, Rocky IV. Uh, Rocky Three is famous, dare I say, for being the film as we have said throughout this podcast, this is the film where Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion, becomes black. One thing that I noticed, because it, this is the way that I see it, it's like, oh man, Rocky, you're here with all the glitz and the glamour, you've lost the spark, you've lost the eye of the tiger. So, uh, okay, we're gonna go to the all-black gym, and, and uh, you're going to be black for the rest of the movie. Yeah. And... Uh, Paulie is like, I don't like being here with these people, and and everyone is surprisingly not. Whoa! Yeah. Hey, hey, that's racist as fuck. But uh, no, everyone's like, oh, come on, Paulie, it's fine. Like, no. Uh, hashtag cancel Paulie. Yeah. Some of the things he's saying here. Yeah. Talking about colored people, saying he needs a gun. Fuck Ollie. Okay, He's but, you know, I would have to go back and re-listen to exactly what he was saying because whenever Paulie came on screen, Ugh. I thought the chances of a yo were much better, so it was just like yeah. sitting here like this, like, because have we done the yo count? I don't think we've done the yo count on this. Not yet, not yet. I wanted to. I wanted to break down some parts of the film first. Yeah. So the movie starts with previously on Rocky, and I like that. Yeah, I like the previously ons. They they make me smile. Then it's the standard uh, rich and famous montage. I like how they use footage. I feel this is very meta. They use footage of. Sylvester Stallone hosting the Muppet Show, but they cut out the part where Ra where uh, Kermit says, "It's the Muppet Show with our very special guest star," and then they cut so that they don't he hear 
Kermit say, with our very special guest star, Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Yeah. yeah. So they use footage of Sylvester Stallone hosting the Muppet Show, yeah. but they make it seem through editing like it's Rocky Balboa hosting the Muppet Show. I just think that's meta as fuck. I know yeah. that episode of the Muppet Show, and I like that. I would like to point out, however, that, that in the opening montage, you, you see Mr. T boxing, and he's climbing up through the ranks. And yeah. then you see Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion, fighting and going and uh, defending his title. Mr. T only fights white people. And apart from his German fight with the German champion, oh God. Rocky only fights black people. Well, that well, see, but that's the thing. Like, like the movie is straight up good versus evil, and that is white guy versus black guy. Yeah, you know. And so the only and, way and that Robert Lang can beat the black guy is by getting a black trainer going to the black neighborhood, going to the all black gym, and learning how to be black. It's it's kind of racist. Yeah. And then at the end. He's touching Mr. T's, uh, uh, during the match, he's touching Mr. T's, uh, yeah. goatee. Get your fucking Guido mitts off of Mr. T's, uh, 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 what is it? I called it a goatee. His, uh, mohawk. Get yeah. your fucking hands off of Mr. T's hair, you racist Guido piece of shit. Yeah. Off. But but Mr. T as a wow. character, as a character, as Clubber Lang as a character, was I, I just, I'm just calling him Mr. T. A complete cartoon character. He, he uh, was completely two dimensional. He was the angry black man. Yeah, you know, and that was it. All we really got was like videos and shit like that, and him being aggressive and stuff like that. You know, we didn't get any kind of backstory at all for the character. This yeah. was just the bad guy. That's it. You know, so so yeah. that's what I mean. It's like very formulaic, very, very, very popcorn. You know? Yeah. So you know how he got on in this movie? Mr. T? Pay yeah. Apparently, Sylvester Stallone had a habit of seeing something on TV and then calling that person up because he watched Hulk Hogan wrestle Andre the Giant and said, I want you to be in the next Rocky movie. Apparently, Mr. T, uh, he was in the Army. He was in the Peace Corps. He worked at a bouncer at a, yeah. at a club called Dingbat's Discotheque. And he would get into fights with people, and he was like a super badass and stuff. Um, yeah. And so he he became a bouncer, and he became like well known as being a bouncer who didn't take shit from anyone. And so he became so famous as a bouncer that celebrities started hiring him to be bodyguards. Yeah. And so for ten years, he was a bodyguard for. Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, Steve McQueen, LeVar Burton? Yeah. I want to see the movie of Reading Rainbow and Mr. T hanging out together. Yeah. Don't worry, Kuta Kinte. I Ten got you. Ten minutes. You know, like, that's awesome. So he got Ten on a TV morning. show. Okay. Right. He got on a TV show called The Sunday Games. Uh, Mr. T did. Let me let me go back. This was even before, um, before the A team, before anything. He was on this game show called that that was called the Sunday Games and was also called Games People Play. It right. was a reality TV series that ran from 1980 to 1981, hosted by Bryant Gumble, and had a bunch of celebrity co-hosts. Uh, Johnny Bench was in there looking all schlubby. But they had unusual sports competitions, including beer guzzling, 
a belly flop contest, and a taxi cab demolition derby. And they had um, twice on the show, they had a competition for America's toughest bouncer. Mr. T won both times, gave all of his uh, uh, prize money to charity. And Sylvester Stallone happened to watch this reality show and uh, cast him as Clubber Lang. Okay. And that led to A Team, that led to him becoming super famous, was just. Sylvester Stallone watching TV and seeing him on there. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. heard I heard something similar. You know, I, I just heard like a like a like a bodyguard or something like that. But yeah. yeah. Badass bouncer. Um I love the arcade scene too in this so much. It's nice to see an arcade. I remember when arcades were filled with cigarette smoke and were kind of dangerous. Yeah. I remember that period in time. And then Paulie trashes a Rocky pinball machine. Why? Because he's a piece of crap. Yeah. Uh, I hate him so much. Then Thunderlips <laughs> shows up. Yes. And it's Hulk Hogan with his beautiful hair like a fragile uh, China doll. Yeah. His fragile little hair. Um. I hate Hulk Hogan. He's a piece of shit. Number one, the leg drop does nothing. That is the stupidest finishing move in the history of professional wrestling. Yeah. Like, my finishing move is going to be, ooh, the headlock. Like, that's basically what Hulk Hogan's, like, leg drop is. It's fucking ridiculous. But also, I would like to remind people that um, Hulk Hogan went on a racist tirade in his infamous sex tape which was at the center of the lawsuit that shut down the website Gawker. The uh, only good thing that Hulk Hogan ever did was fight the Rocky, fight the Rock at that one WrestleMania, appear in Rocky Three, and uh, shut down Gawker. But also, he's a racist piece of shit. In his sex tape, he was talking with the woman that he was having sex with about his daughter, Brooke, and her new boyfriend, who was a black guy, and he, he says in the video, quote, I mean, I'd rather, if she was going to fuck some N-word, I'd rather have her marry an eight-foot-tall N-word worth $100 million like a basketball player. I guess we're all a little racist, fucking N-word. No, we're not all a little racist. It's just you, Hulk Hogan. You can fuck off. I do like that Hulk Hogan keeps kayfabe while fighting Rocky Balboa. Yeah. That is definitely an 80s thing. Yeah. And, and I think that that's kind of fun. And, so and that's what I was Hogan. thinking. Like, oh, come on. Wrestling is yeah. not that real. <laughs> I, also, I also like how Mick tells Rocky that uh, um, Mr. T is going to kill him to death. Yeah. Whoa! You mean he's gonna kill him to death? Oh, holy shit! That's then the uh, Rocky loses killing. the title. Then the penguin dies. I I think we got this. Paulie is racist as fuck. Uh huh. I feel that I love this movie. I love Rocky three and Rocky four so much because they're dumb and because they're stupid. And when I was a kid, these were like superhero movies. Rocky well, it, movies were like the MCU is now. You know right. what's going to happen, but you watch it anyway. It's like a Godzilla movie. And, and it, it was just no, fun. It's, it's, and it's I, very, it's very it. pop music, you know? Like, like Ugh, yes. You, there's it. some pop songs pop that you just pop can't pop. help but liking, and you know their shit, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. But, like, that is it. That is that is there. There's it hits all the right points that make you like it, and the same yep. thing with the Rocky movies. It has learned. Okay, we have to hit this point. We have to hit this point. We have to hit this point. We have to hit this point, which <clears throat> is what makes it formulaic. But they hit those points really good. Yeah. But so, also, so you this... hate okay, you hate Paulie. 
you yeah. have a strong reaction to a character in a fucking movie. I That's do. awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. But watching this movie now, mm -hmm. so far removed from when I loved it as a kid, watching this now as an adult, I can now look at this movie and say, I like this movie. There is very little in this film. No. Thematically, plot-wise, character-wise, Rocky loses his mojo. He gets it back. The end. That's it. It's a tight hour and a half. Yeah. You know? This is a short movie. There's not much here, but still, it's the most fun I've had so far. But we have to go through those emotional steps. Yeah. You know? Like, uh... Yeah. Rocky doesn't take his training seriously, you know. Have you seen any of the Creed movies? No. I haven't seen no. any of the Creed movies. I saw the end of Creed 2 once while um, bored and having nothing to do but watching cable. But, <laughs> but uh, fun fact, in the Creed movies, you learn who wins at the end. Okay. The secret fight between Rocky and Apollo, you learn who wins, I think, oh. in the first Creed film. So, that's good. And I'm excited to get to that. But, Bunny, let's not forget the reason why we're here. How many yo's did you count, Bunny? <sighs> One. One? One yo. Okay. I'm going to go with that. That is and our official answer. That is that is the consensus of both Jeannie and I. Yeah. One. Being like, have you heard any yo's? We just knew. No. Yeah, there weren't a lot. But by the time we get to Rocky Five and uh, Rocky Balboa, the number is going to be insane. Because there's like almost 30 in Rocky Five alone. Yeah. So and then, and not then a lot of yo's in this one, but you know why there's not a lot of yo's? Yeah. Uh he he got sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. I would so backtrack so less yo's. through I would backtrack through yo rich environments. You know? Yeah. yeah. But no. It, they got money, so so they don't need as many yos. But um, so that's it for Rocky Three this week. Next week, and I mean literally next week, we're going to Mother Russia and eating beets and maybe taking some uh, uh, steroids with Rocky Four, and I'm excited for that because that one's my favorite. But uh, now that I'm looking back at this week. Uh, uh, Ro uh, Rocky three montages. Uh, uh, William Ina, ex wrestler is not Lauren Boebert's dad. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. It has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I I, I agree with what you said. I didn't want to say it because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction. But yes, I concur with your assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin. And on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and Max and everyone else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you. Oh.